So we're looking at this question here. We'll look at the definition of the buffer solution. And for this, everybody should generally understand what's happening here with the hydroxide reacting with the ammonia to produce our, well, ammonium to produce our ammonia and water, right? What we're saying is that when we add a small quantity of this, this solution, right, what is gonna, what's going to happen over here? Let me just draw it over here. We're going to have hydroxide right here. The hydroxide is going to be neutralizing the acid right so neutralization reaction is occurring and that reaction that will actually decrease the concentration of ammonia and cause the reverse reaction to be favored or what we normally term as the position of the equilibrium shifts to the left all right so that's what's happening so that's why this is a reverse reaction here that is favored when they look when the equilibrium shifts to the left Basically, equilibrium position here, the arrow that I just put right here, it's shifting to the left right here. That is basically the backwards reaction that you'll see happening. And then if we add a small amount of acid now um, to the solution specifically, and we know that acid doesn't really manifest itself as just protons, but we have the hydronium, the hydroxonium or the hydronium ion, right? And what we're going to have here, that looks so weird. What we're going to have here is ammonium being produced right plus our water okay and that's what we have there and that would be what happens when we have a small amount of acid produced and if we have a um, small amount of acids being added now what we're going to be doing is actually decreasing the concentration of ammonia right and then that will push the equilibrium of the reaction now to the right in favor of the forward reaction, which will produce, um, well, decreasing the concentration of ammonia, right? That will actually, um, interesting. Okay, so if we actually increase, um, actually the concentration of acid over this side, right? We're going to have um, the acid being taken up by the base over here. Right? And that will actually increase the concentration of ammonium ions. Right? And in order to counteract that change, right, we're going to, well, it will decrease. Mm, I am, um, I think the writings here are confusing. Give me a second, let me remove these lines and then explain that. Yep, so this was confusing. Let me remove this. Alright? So, in the case of our acid now, alright, this will be better. So in the case of our acid now, when we add the acid to the solution now, right, the ammonia will take up the extra acid, right? That will actually decrease the concentration of ammonia, right? Producing um, more ammonium, right? So what, that's what we're going to have there. Okay, and that is the reaction that we see here, producing more ammonium. So this is a shift of the equilibrium to the right, and this is a shift of the equilibrium to the left that we're seeing here. All we need to do is just basically have our equation and then explain what's happening and that's two marks two marks each all right so i'm not sure if there are any more questions for that but the last question here in the in this entire paper would be this wait last two questions right okay last couple questions here we have here calculate the pH. scroll back up for a solution. second sir. oh scroll back up for a second all right Okay, there it is. Tell me when I can scroll down. You can scroll down. All right, thank you. So calculate the pH of a buffer solution made from 20 centimeter cubes of 0 0.1 mole dm cube of propanoic acid and 40 centimeter cube of 0 0.050 moles of sodium propanoate. Right, the acid dissociation constant of our propanoic acid is 1.22 times 10 to negative fifth power. All right, so what is it that we do here? What is the big idea? We know how we create buffer solutions, right? So first of all, we need to have the overall molar concentration, right, of both propanoic acid, right, and both the 
sodium propanoate, right? In order to find the, the pH of a buffer, what is the equation we must use? The pH of a buffer? What equation is that? Don't let me down now, okay? Go ahead and answer. Um, pH is equal to pKa plus log acid on log base on acid. Okay, log the base. Well, the salt in this case on the acid. All right. So we have here you now. So the pH is now equal to as you said the pKa. Right, plus the log of our salt concentration uh, see this is not looking good our salt concentration of our acid concentration right all right so that's the equation right so what do we have and what do we need right let's say that our pka what is pka equal to What's the pKa equal to? Where's my calculator? What's, what's pKa equal to, guys? It's the acid disassociation constant. The pKa? There's a P in front of it. And for P notation, the P stands for the negative log of something. So the pKa would be the negative log of the acid association constant Ka. So in the pKa in this case would be equal to the negative log, right, of 1.22 times 10 to the negative 5. Right? So if we look at it like that now. We have gotten that. And what would be the answer for that? If we just neg log on this, we're going to get 1.22 times 2. Okay. Alright. What we're going to get is 4.91. Right? Lovely. That's a pKa. Right? That's what we got there. Okay? So we have that there. Everybody's fine so far? Okay. So what do we need now? Log is a function. We can't get a function. All right. So we need the salt concentration, the acid concentration. Do we have those concentrations? We need to calculate them using the volume and. Oh, wait. No, we do. The 0 0.1 and the 0 0.05. Okay. But it is the propanoic acid concentration is 0 0.1 more per dm cube in 20 centimeter cubes. And here the propanoic acid is 0 0.050 more per dm cube in 40 cm cubes. But when we create a buffer solution, don't we mix the two mixtures to create one new con one new volume? Isn't that what we do? yes so this here is my question are we going to add 20 cm cube to 40 cm cube find our new molar concentrations and then plug that in yes okay all right so let's have a look at this now so if we add 20 and 40 what is the answer 20 plus 40. 60. So our new is volume is 60 centimeter cubes. Yeah, cubic centimeters, right? 60 cubic centimeters. And then in dm cube, that would be what? 60 divided by a thousand, right? So that would, that would be what? 0 0.5. 
so that's our new volume specifically right so what's existing in here now we have the 0 0.1 mole per dm cube propanoic acid and the 0 0.05 mole per dm cube propanoate right so how is it do we how do we find the new concentrations of our propanoic acid and our sodium propanoate how so let's start with the propanoic acid. How will we find propanoic acid concentration in this new combination? Does anybody have an idea? Sorry, repeat the question. How do we find propanoic acid concentration? Um, we find number of moles and then say concentration is equal to number of moles on volume. Okay. You could find the number of moles here. Okay. Hmm. That's a way to look at it. That's an interesting way to look at this question. Um okay, so technically you could find the number of moles and then get the volume and we get the concentration there. But what does this statement mean? It it, me it means here that we have 0 0.1 mole per for every dm cube existing in our volume and we know that the amount of dm cube we have is 0 0.06 dm cube could we use that information to get how much is um is present if it is 0 0.1 more per dm cube in 0 0.02 dm cubes of solution then how much would it be in 0 0.06 dm cube Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. what, what I'm asking is Yeah. Okay. Everybody else agrees with that approach? Okay, can you repeat please? What we're trying to find is new molar concentration of propanoic acid. Right? So what's happening here is that we need we have the information that in twenty cubic centimeters Right, so we have a, a solution is made from 20 cubic centimeters of 0 0.1 mole um, per dm cube propanoic acid, right, and 40 centimeter cubes of 0 0.05 mole per um, dm cube of sodium propanoic. But in order to create a buffer solution, we say that buffer solution was made from these two different solutions. So now that we combine these solutions, right, we're creating a new volume. So I'm asking now. Does the concentration of the solutions change when we add these two solutions together? Do we now have to look at how much moles, right? And right here, do, do we need to find a new concentration? That is what I'm asking. So, yes, because you don't have one dm cube, you have 0 0.06. All right, so we need to now find the overall dm concentration of solution hmm. interesting so we have 0 0.1 mole per dm cube of propanoic acid that will change the, the that will change based on concentration i'm um, not the concentration the volume so the new volume will change that concentration of propanoic acid Will it? These are the questions we need to ask. So I'm asking everyone, Shade, Shanique, um, Divine, everyone. Mm -hmm. Will the change in yes, volume so. affect it? Okay. So, in what way now? So, how do we find that new concentration if it's going to change? Um, 20 over 60, since it's 20 centimeters cubed. Um, and then multiply it by 0 0.1. Okay. 
so we're proposing that okay so 20 over 60 right i mean we'll convert it to dm cube that's what we're saying we'll convert it to dm cube and then times it by 0 0.1 okay. or we leave it as a cm cube um we could do it as dm cube okay everybody else agrees with that procedure there 20 dm cube well 0 0.02 dm cube divided by 0 0.04 dm cube times 0 0.1 do we agree with that? Yeah. So please repeat that. I'm sorry. Okay, so what you're proposing is that we take 0 0.02 dm cube and we divide that by 0 0.04 dm cube. This is what you're saying, right? And we times that by 0 0.1. To get the new concentration 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.06 oh 0 0.06 rather sorry about that 0 0.06 yeah. mm -hmm. so that's what we're that's what you're proposing yeah okay check in chat okay negative now okay all right okay so we're looking at this right so everybody agrees with this approach that's what i'm asking i don't hear anybody else there's only one person bring this up and nobody else has oh, sir, question mm -hmm. we're the, we are trying to find the new concentration of the salt in form right well we need the salt and the acid so we're trying to find a new concentration for the acid well for the acid and the salt for both of them don't we So we have two vo so two solutions, right? And we add them together, right? And what everyone is saying, right? well, I'm not hearing everyone answer, right? But what we're saying here is that when we change the volume, right? We're gonna change the volume, right? We have a com we combine the two solutions, so the, obviously the two volumes will add together, right? That is now the f the final volume, right? The concentration of the solutions will change in that new volume. That is the question that I ask, right? And probably only two persons answered, but I'm asking you guys, as multiple persons are on the meeting, right? Do we agree with that approach? Do we agree that the concentrations will change when we add the two solutions together? Does it change? Yes, it's going to change. So what we're going to be doing is using that new volume in order to figure out the new concentration. All right so what we have here someone proposed i think yeah so someone proposed this way of finding new concentration concentration right my question is do we agree with this way yes okay so that was my question <laughs> if we agree that was the question right so we can do it this way right or we could use a statement probably a more statement right so let's have a look at this so if we have, if we just input this into our calculators, times this by 0 0.1, our new concentration here is 0 0.03, right? For the propanoic acid, so for propanoic acid, we did that, right? So it's 0 0.03, right? Um, more per dm cube. Would it be more per dm cube? Yeah. yeah. More per dm cube, right? And we have that right for the propanoic acid, for the acid, right? And using this specific way, go ahead. Somebody raise hand. Go ahead. Sir, I feel like I'm lost because you're saying that we're supposed to find a new concentration of the acid i'm wondering why because isn't the 0 0.10 is the concentration of the acid okay all right so what we're saying is that we have created a, a solution right of 20 centimeter cube right and our concentration of that acid is going to be 0 0.1 mole per cube in that 20 cm cube solution right 
if we're going to combine the solution right itself right the two solutions are add more then our concentration might change all right so if we look at it like this right when we're standardizing a solution right when we have um our primary standard specifically we measure the mass of our primary standard right and now we are to put that mass into a volumetric flask and fill it up to where the the flask is warranted right everybody has done that before right you everybody used a volumetric flask before right yes sir okay so we're adding a specific volume of solvent right to that solute to measure up to a specific concentration right what happens if we pass the point at the volumetric flask what happens when we fill it over the volume required it will change the concentration of the solution doesn't it yes sir so if we have a specific amount of acid right in a specific amount in a specific volume right you will have a general concentration once calculated right but if we change the volume in which that acid exists then the concentration itself will change okay so volume is the amount of moles that exists within a volume so specifically for the 0 0.02 dm cube of solution we have 0 0.1 mole per dm cube of propanoic acid well let's say that 0 0.02 increased to 0 0.06 we have to recalculate that concentration right so in this case now we had that changing these values to get our ethanoate we're gonna have 0.04 4 times 0 0.05 to get our ethanoid, well not ethanoid, propanoid now. So to get our propanoid concentration, what is the value of our propanoid, what is the value there that we get from that? 0 0.03. 0 0.03? Everyone got that? Okay. Let me just do it briefly for myself. Yes, sir. Alright. 0 0.03. Interesting. Alright. 0 0.03 moles per dm. M O L. The writing on this system is weird. Per dm cube of the salt. This is interesting because buffer solutions are usually made with equimolar solutions. So this makes sense. All right. So what we're going to have now is our entire equation. So the pKa is 4.91. And we're going to add the logarithm of that value, which is 0 0.03 over 0 0.03. Right. And if we know math, the logarithm of 1 is going to generally be what? Logarithm of one is that is what? Zero. Lovely. Right. Zero plus four point nine one is what? Four point nine one. Lovely. pH is four point nine one, and it's a weak acidic pH because it's obvious that this propanoic acid is really weak. All right. I think this 4.6 that was on the paper, right, is from the actual, like, if you probably find the actual pH of the acid itself, right, uh, not the buffer itself, it should be around 4.6 something, but the values in the question gives us 4.91. Alright. So, looking at this now, the experimental determination of the pH of a buffer solution in 2c was carried out by a group of students right now we must list two relevant pieces of apparatus and or materials that have been used to carry out the experiment how do we determine the, the ph of a buffer what can we use we have to use a ph meter all right we have to use an accurate measurement so we could use a ph meter all right could use a pH meter. What else could we use? 
to buffer solution and probably a beaker. So the separate buffer solutions. So the buffer solutions, right? And these are usually for calibration. Of calibration of your pH meter. Uh, anybody about cal calibrated a pH meter before? No. Not that I can remember. Okay, I'm not sure if some high schools would have such such luxurious laboratory supplies to have a pH meter on hand, right? But what you basically do, the pH meter is an electrode, so it's basically potentiometry, right? And what it does is measure the the concentration of hydrogen ions, right? So you put it in the buffer solution, so you can get the pH of one buffer, and right, and then well, the two different buffer solutions, right? So you basically get those two, right? And then what you do, well, your acid and base solutions, and then what you do, you combine it into the buffer solution, and then you can either you can actually calibrate it from your buffer solution and then measure the pH of the buffer you created. So generally what we have are markups, right? You In the lab, you'll generally have a buffer solution, right? And you can find the pH of your buffer solution to know that, okay, we have a standard buffer solution. So like, the buffer solution is supposed to be, let's say, 3, right? And then you make up your buffers now and then you test the pH of your buffer solution that you made to see how close it is to the actual. That's basically what you guys do in that lab, right? Not sure if anybody's going to any universities to do chemistry, right? Or biochemistry. You will have to do those labs, all right? Here now, um, and describe... that's how you calibrate. Yeah, that's generally how we calibrate. Well, mm, hold on, calibration that's though. Me. Hold on, hold on. For calibration though, what I'm saying is that the generated lab is about measuring your buffer solution and then measuring the buffer solution that you created. But for calibration specifically, what you do is measure the pH of multiple solutions, right? Multiple random solutions, acidic and basic solutions, to make sure that your pH meter is working along the correct parameters, right? So calibration is a little bit different. Right? Mm. Okay. So two relevant steps that students may take. Um, technically, you could use titrations, right? But titrations are just less accurate. So technically, for person persons could use titrations, which would obviously want to use very um, precise instruments, right? Apparatus. So the pipette could be one, and you could have let's say a volumetric flask. Well, you don't generally need a volumetric flask specifically unless you're creating your markup solutions, right? So what you did use a what a pipette? What other solution? Would, what other apparatus we could use? Or we could use materials as well. We could use a suitable indicator. Because the question did say that we could use um, uh, apparatus and or materials. So a suitable indicator for this reaction is a weak acid. So we could use thymol blue or phenol thaline. Oh, you spell phenol thaline again? That's it? No, that's not how you spell phenol thaline. Um, uh, it's not just yes, pH somewhere in it. Another pH. Oh, phenol. Okay. Ah, that's not phenol thiolene. <laughs> like, okay, so this word here is the way how we just write phenol in the love. That's all I just read it. All right, so phenol thiolene, right? It is actually. Let me fix this word. Um, pH and then T A L E I N E. P I. All right, so we have that there. Two relevant steps that we can take. What would these two relevant steps be? Just two steps, two marks. One step a mark and then another step a mark. What these two steps be? Calibrate the pH meter and then use the pH meter to measure the pH. Calibration of pH meter. And just using the pH meter to measure pH. 
I mean, that is... I mean, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> that is a given. We're asking here for both of us, right? So two different steps in preparing... Well, experimental determination piece for both of us. Okay. Alright, so we could calibrate that. What else would be important? Okay, using the pH meter. I don't I think that is a given though. In the in the entire thing, you'd use it to measure it. Um but any other direct steps would be important if you're using a titration. If we are using titration, right, we would have like um the addition of the indicator. And this is going to be specifically in figuring out the concentrations to find the concentrations right, of the separate solutions. So all well, the separate um, solutions of your acid and alkali. Right? So that could be important as well. But generally calibration of the pH meter and then setting up the electrode will be important right the electrode in the solutions right so you can actually get the entire pH of the solution right another thing could be right what we could do actually is actually um measure do this right from the question here right we have the two solutions so what we could do as well is just find the concentration of the two solutions right and then what we could do is calculate the P, the Ka, right, of the propanoic acid from the P, well, from the pH that we get, and then we could use that to determine the pH of the solution from the henderson hasselbalch equation. So that's another possibility, but that's not technically experimental per se. Um, that's not entirely experimental. We can just do the calculations. We don't actually have to do the experiment. We can get a theoretical value. All right.